Good morning. Good morning. It is the start of another week. It is Sunday and we are excited to go. I see you out there already uh, making your presence known. Happy Sunday to you. Uh, Linda Polite says from Harvest, Alabama, right here. Uh, good morning, Marissa Morris. Marcella, we, th we see you out there. Gloria McMillan from Trinidad says, good morning. Good morning. Much love to all. Exactly. State Garden State of New Jersey. Sharon Howard, good morning. Uh, good morning. Another day of, of powerful lessons, excuseless in the house. Help us, Lord. I see you. I see you. <laughs> Barbados is representing memphis is, is is in the house i see you i see you jamaica is here good morning i'm from jamaica uh love the page press the thumbs up i love it somebody people are giving people uh, all kinds of instructions as well i love it somebody says i love the hat <laughs> yeah listen listen the hair ain't quite right had to put a hat on today long island is in the house fort worth texas nassau bahamas rome georgia i didn't even know those are rome how about that excuseless theme song by Minister Stephen Manders? Yes, it was fire. Come on, come on. We can put some appreciation in the chat for, for that, for that. Listen, I, I want to say this just as we get ready to, to kick it off today. Uh, we have, <laughs> man, eight for eight. Today is day eight, eight for eight. But then there's like, you know, there's last Sabbath and then there's Wednesday night and then there's this yesterday. So it's kind of a, another three extra one. Anyway, eight for eight, eight for eight. Let me know if we're just we're just following along. <laughs> yeah, see, Carolyn Lamb says eight for eight plus three. We're just following along on the 21 days of prayer. Eight for eight, eight for eight today. And if you are here for the very first time, please let us know in the chat. We would love to just descend on you with a shower of love and welcome because we are so excited that you're here and you're getting ready to take this excuseless journey with us. I have one takeaway I want to share with you from yesterday's message. And I always keep on messing it up, so I have to rethink about it in my head. It's It says, uh, destiny disguised as destruction. The three Ds, destiny disguised as destruction. See, I didn't get a chance to interview Pastor Snell yesterday. Pastor Paul did. But that was my Ooh, I love the alliteration. I love the, you know, it's it's three Ds, number one. And then just the way that it's said is just, oh, destiny disguised as destruction. He had to grab the back of that, grab it by the tail, but he had to grab it like he owned it. Come on, somebody out there. That, that message was for me, man. I said, Lord, I hear you talking. I hear you speaking to me today. That was absolutely powerful. Absolutely powerful. I hope that you guys got a chance to, to check out yesterday's message. During our worship experience uh, uh, here at Oakwood University Church, but also uh, with Dean Linder Anderson yesterday morning. My goodness. Uh, talk about fire from heaven, man. Uh, early in the morning. It was absolutely amazing. And uh, we, we're just so excited that Dean is still a part of the community, even though she's in Pottstown, PA. We're excited that she uh, continues to connect in, and she's going to be my 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 ride or die every every Sabbath morning, every Saturday morning as we as we kick it off at eight a.m. So hopefully you guys will come back and check us out. Well, today 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 we have our speaker ready to go with Pastor Snell, and uh, normally I do the 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 Sabbath covenant. But I want to bring it up when he's on screen because I, I think, you know, the, we want to hear from the author of the covenant, not Sabbath covenant, sorry, the excuseless covenant. And for those that want a copy of it, we've placed a link in the chat on YouTube. Unfortunately, I couldn't do it on Facebook, but on YouTube, I put the link in the chat and I actually pinned it. I pinned it there. Uh, so uh, on Breath of Life and on Oakwood University Church, it's pinned right at the top. Uh, says something like, get your copy of the Excuseless Covenant. And there's a link there, boltv.live slash covenant. boltv.live slash covenant. I, th I see people welcoming Sharon, who says she's a first timer. We want to say welcome to you, Sharon. Thank you so much for being with us today. 
family, oh, there's there's a lot to a lot of ground to cover. So I'm not gonna belabor the point. I want to get Pastor Snell on screen as quickly as possible. So let's bow our heads for a word of prayer as we invite God's presence into this digital space. 599 devices are connected right now. But we know that number will grow, especially as you continue to do uh, your uh, digital evangelism by sharing and tagging and messaging people and letting them know Excuseless is about to begin. And we want to give make sure they know that their seat has been saved right here next to you. Let's bow our heads. God, we are so thankful for your love, your grace and your mercy. We are excited for a new week, uh, a new morning a new opportunity, uh, fresh mercies are available. And because we still have breath in our lungs, we give you praise, glory, and honor because we have the use of our limbs and a measure of sanity. Some of us ain't quite right. Uh, we thank you, God, that we are in this space. We thank you that we can see your hand all over our lives, even in the things that we don't necessarily like, even in the struggle, stresses, and strife, even in the blessings, in the tangible representation of your presence of, uh, in our lives, God, we give you praise, glory, and honor for truly you and you alone are worthy. Bless us, God, as we hang out in this space, we pray. Be with our speaker. Uh, be with the technology. God, allow for more people to come in and, and be blessed by this experience, we pray in your precious name. Amen and amen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome, 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 man. Welcome, welcome. I've got my chapter eight. I've got yes, chapter sir. eight on deck. Today is day eight. Doc, how are you this morning? I'm blessed and highly favored, grateful and thankful to be in day eight of the revolution. Thankful mm. to be joined online with our, our online family. It is such a joy to see everybody greeting one another in the comments, shouting Absolutely. out where they're from. Absolutely. Just the, the fervor, I mean, it just waters my soul and makes me anxious and excited to, to get into it today. Absolutely. And we, we, man, I see somebody else is new, uh, first timer, uh, somebody, Joseph, I think it is there. The people mm -hmm. are welcoming Joseph in the chat. Uh, yeah. so many different, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Somebody said, LOL, a measure of sanity. Yes, yes, yes. Sometimes, sometimes yeah. you guys got to praise God for the little bit you got. Uh, Amen. listen, we, we are, we want to kick things off with our excuseless covenant. And so yeah. doc, I'm going to put that on screen and you can lead us through that. Sure, sure. Very excited about it. And we're praying, family, that this is not just words in the air, but that it is affirming something inside of you. And it is a covenant that we're not just making with with God. We're making this covenant with one another as we make Amen. this journey as a community. Yes, indeed. So today, I continue the journey toward excuseless living. I recognize that excuses are kryptonite to my soul and cancer to my calling. I make a covenant to stop lying to myself about why I pray so little, fall so often, procrastinate so frequently, neglect my health, live without structure, and leave family outcomes up to chance. I will add focus to essential things and withdraw focus from optional things. Mm. I will focus less on what I'm lacking and stand in the promise of God's supply. I will reclaim my time, yes. budget my energy, yes. and withhold oxygen from all excuses. This, help me Holy Spirit, church, <laughs> this is the season. This is the season. The time is now. now. Yes. I feel my help. Let the revolution begin. I claim God's power to become excuseless. Excuseless. Amen. Excuseless. Amen. Excuseless. I hope that Amen. you were reciting that uh, at home, uh, in your car, as you're on your morning jog. Maybe you're mm -hmm. on the treadmill. I hope that you were reciting Amen. that with us this morning. Amen. I hope that you allow that thing to permeate your spirit, man, and mm -hmm. get into every aspect of your life. As Pastor Snell said, we don't want this just to be a, a saying that, that remains on as words on a page. We want to live mm -hmm. that thing and yeah. cause it to become real in our lives. That is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. 
Doc, we uh we 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 always start off with of course welcome. Uh, yeah. We want to say a word of thanks, man. I know that it it cannot be easy to uh, deliver the way that you have over the last week. <laughs> you were with us Monday, yeah. su- Sabbath, Sunday, Monday. Uh, yeah. Then we heard from you Wednesday night, and then again yesterday. And yeah. now you're back here today, and uh, that's a lot. And so yeah. we just we're just praising God for you and for uh, the messages that we've been able to receive. But also we, we're praising God and praying that God continues to sustain you mm-hmm. uh, and to, to keep you in this season. There's a lot happening and we're excited about all of it. I, I want to ask a quick question before we dive sure. into yeah. our time today. Uh, last week, we got a chance to ask what is what do you hear God saying? That's enough of. And you shared with us some some yeah. powerful things this week. We want to ask if if you can share. Um, yeah. What do you hear God saying? Here, I'm actually asking you to do more. Yeah. Uh, in, so, in this, yeah. Go ahead. No, no, that is actually something very, very clear. So I think mm. you know, and I think there's something that we can all resonate with. I I am almost positive that most of us have these moments where, in the course of a day. You know, the the Holy Spirit brings somebody to your mind, to your remembrance. He puts someone on your heart. Yeah. And there are times where just in the midst of all of the things that I have to do, and and one of my strengths, and, and at times it's a flaw, I can be a very task-oriented person. So it's just like I, I won't, once I'm doing something, I don't deviate until it's complete. Mm. But there are just times where I'm saying, okay, Lord, I'm going to make room for divine disruption. So okay. that when you when you put a family member, a, a friend, uh, you know, somebody from the body of Christ on my heart, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be willing to interrupt just to text, to call, That's to good. check in. That's and one good. of the things just even this week is just as people have been placed upon my heart, um, you know, to just kind of take that time to move into intercession for that person to, and to not just send a text and say, I'm praying for you, but to, to move into intercession and to send a text that says, I have already prayed for you. Yeah, and so right I there. think that there are times where, again, you need to power through, you need to focus, you need to get it done. But I think for me, I need to, you know, God has been calling me to say, nope, leave room for some disruption, leave some room for some detour. Yeah. And, and when I give you the impression don't don't put it on the agenda for later. There's a reason I gave you the impression when I gave it. <laughs> my my timing is not random. It is not uh, serendipity. It, it has purpose. And so when I put somebody on your heart, it means that that person needs intercession now, encouragement mm, now. now. They need to be checked in on now. now. It means, saints, that there are times where somebody may be in the valley of decision they may be in the peak of spiritual warfare, like signal victories may be won or lost. And there are just times where we just need to say, let me, let me stop. Let me, let, me stop. let me just check in. Let me send that text. Let me call. Let me stop by. And so that's one of those things where I've had to, to, to make a shift. Because again, like in my mind, I got to do one thing before I go to the next thing. Yeah, yeah. It's just where I'm worried a little bit. But but I'm, but this was it. I'm, I'm going to leave room for divine disruption. And mm. I'm not going to put it off, especially when God gives you a strong impression. Listen, listen, we're, we're back on the D's again, y'all. I want you to put divine yeah. disruption in the chat. Divine disruption. Yeah. Put, put that in <laughs> the chat. Put that in the, Lord, there's a lot of D's, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. I love it. Mm-hmm. Divine dis- disruption. You know, this is this is so good. And the reason why we we ask these questions, family, and we're going to kick it to Pastor Snell just now, but the reason why we ask these questions is because I want you to ask yourself these questions, number one. Mm-hmm. Feel free to answer the questions in the chat. And here's what happens when you hear what people's answers are. You begin to say to yourself, hmm, that mm-hmm. I might, man, that might be me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last yeah. time Pastor Snell shared, you know, spending more time with the family and, you know, kind of carving out those blocks mm-hmm. and having those, you know, these these pieces yep. of the day that are are, are intentional and they're devi- defined. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I said, okay, God, I hear you. I hear you. Yep. And now this time he's saying that. And I got to tell you, even this week. Uh, somebody dropped on my spirit and I messaged yeah. them and the response back was, oh man, I needed that call. I haven't talked to them yeah. for at least two years. Yeah. And they said, yeah. man, I needed this. You have no idea how mm-hmm. I needed this call today. It's just me being, I, I don't know why. Maybe I just had time yeah. that day, but I was obedient. And so now with him sharing that, it kind of reiterates like, okay, God, 
Mm-hmm. I feel like you're saying that to me too. And what yeah. what would it look like, family? You know, to 875 of us online today, uh, yeah. if if everyone decided that when God we that mm-hmm. we give God in permission to yeah. disrupt us. Yeah. From a divine, yeah. you know, he as he drops somebody on your spirit that you pause mm-hmm. there and pray. Yeah. Uh, I think I think it will change. It will change the fabric of our existence. It will change the way we are knitted and bonded together. It will create yeah. in us a yeah. heart of flesh and love, genuine love for one another. I just I just wanted to to ta- to double click on that a little bit. And, and I and thank you, know you what, so Pastor, much for sharing. Yeah, you know, I had to yeah. go back to was the premise of James chapter five that. I need us, even as the body of Christ, we are to be a nation of intercessors. That's it. Like God said, my house, and he's not talking about the building. When he refers to, he's talking about us as his house. We are all, as Paul, as Peter says, spiritual stones being built up into a spiritual house. So my house should be a house of prayer for all people. And so I think I need us to realize that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. And and again, I just want to stress it. Like when God lays that burden, when he draws them to your, to your mind, it is because at that moment, they need encouragement at that moment. They just need reinforcement at that moment. Like something is pressing sore upon them and they need the intercessions of the saints. And so I just need you to know, friends of mine, that when you take the time to pray, this is where faith comes in because you may not ever hear the testimony. You may not ever see the result. That person may not ever call you and say, man, because you prayed, you know, the doors open or I yeah. found my strength or I was able to maintain my hold on God. I need you to know that as an intercessor, you cannot make th- somebody saying thank you a prerequisite. Ooh. Right. Um, you, you cannot make That's appreciation good. or follow up a prerequisite. You just got to call on the name of the, the Lord, Lord and trust. According to first John, this is the confidence that we have. Anything we ask in his name, we know that he hears us. And so that's just something, you know, one of one of the many areas, right, that God has been dealing with me on. And it's just a particular point of focus as I go into this week. And then let me just say this. I, I promise. I promise you I'm done after this. Mm-hmm. But the flip side is, yes, yes, yes. The response should not be required for you to pray. Yeah. It should not mm-hmm. be required. But let me say for the person who's being prayed for. Mm-hmm. Your don't keep it to yourself. Don't keep your testimony. Your testimony, testimony should yeah. not be held hostage. You know, Jefferson yeah. uh, preached on that thing a couple of weeks ago. Don't couple hold that ago. testimony hostage. Yeah. Share that testimony because when you share that testimony, hey, you know what, man? Somebody just called me out of the blue, and that yeah. call was exactly what I needed. You know what that does? It yep. inspires someone to say, "Man, I had an impression. Mm-hmm. I need to be obedient to that impression," mm-hmm. because if if that blessed that person, maybe maybe that that person that I was impressed to pray for, maybe they would be blessed as well. Yeah. And so and so, I just wanna sh- help you to see the cycle of it. Yes, it's not required for the intercessor. Mm-hmm. We should yeah. pray as soon as we receive the prompting, regardless mm-hmm. if we ever hear the testimony, but for yeah. the person who's being prayed over, uh, if that's you, then Amen. your responsibility when God comes through is to share your testimony, is to mm-hmm. share with people, this is what God has done. Okay, Doc, I'm gonna hand it over to you or else we're gonna get into a whole different word. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Hey, as the old song says, your soul can get happy and you'll stay all day. That's what That's it is. That's correct. But no, no, no. I, uh, we're we're going to be brief in the word today. Um, as we get into today's chapter, uh, it's simply entitled, All You Need to Know. All You Need to Know. Uh, Father, would you just bless us in this brief dialogue around your word in Jesus' name. For those, uh, we pray, amen. For those of you who who read the chapter today, you know, I opened it up just kind of talking about one of my childhood joys and memories. And so one of the things that me and my dad shared was a love for basketball. In fact, my love was inherited more so from him. And so for those who met dad, he's about 6'4". He was a former collegiate player. And even by the time I was a teenager, uh, he still had remnants of his game. And so one of the things that we love was to go around town, especially on a Saturday night with our church and sometimes on other days, looking for a three on three basketball game. And and one of the things that would always happen is that whenever you're just kind of in an informal athletic setting, uh, you would just have two captains that would choose teams. You would choose teams. And whenever I had a chance to be the captain, 
and to choose those who were on my team, my first pick was going to always be my dad. And it's crazy. The reason I would always choose my dad first was because I just had the belief. I just had the conviction that if dad was on my team, we were going to always win the game. And it's crazy because I just had the belief that the game was not won in the first quarter. The game was not won when the score was tied. The game was not won with the final shot. In my mind, the game was won in the selection process. And the truth is, it didn't always work out that way. We did not win every game, but I just felt like I had the best possible chance for victory, man, if I was able to choose my dad first. And let me just pause to say this, friends, because this is critical, because I need somebody to understand that your victories are not determined while you are in the midst of the battle. Your victories are not determined while you're in the interview or while you're in the um, the particular trial, I need you to know that your victories are won in the selection process. And see, this is simply the message for today. It, it is to be, it is to practice Matthew 6, 33, to seek first the kingdom and its righteousness and to know all other things will be added unto you. In other words, friends, each and every day, you have a chance to make the first selection. And what I'm calling you to do each and every day without any dissent is to make Jesus your first choice every morning. It is to say, Lord, I just need you to be with me. Lord, I just need you to be my guide. Lord, I need you to be my mentor. Lord, I need you to be in control. Lord, I need you to order my steps. And friends, I need you to know that when you have the assurance that God is with you, your outcomes will not be determined by the time you get to work. Your outcomes will not be determined by what your co-worker says. Your outcome will not be determined by what happens when you're in the doctor's office. Your outcome will not be determined when you're sitting before the judge. I need you to know that your outcomes are determined when you give Jesus the first uh, rights of refusal, when you make Jesus your primary choice, when you allow Jesus to govern all of the activity of the day. And see, friends, this is what I need somebody to get about excuseless living. It is not about just having ability, talent, strength, resources, or courage. One of the primary components of excuseless living is assurance. And so if we go back to Moses just real quick, I promise I won't be here with you long. You see, one of the things that when Moses begins to open up his mouth, and to give a proliferation of excuses as to why he cannot go. Go back and read chapter three of the book of Exodus. He says, listen, man, who am I to go to Pharaoh? Man, he's thinking in his mind, I don't have the army. I don't have the backing. I don't have the resources. I can't talk. I don't have the support. They won't believe me. And it's crazy because the word says that God just gives him one assurance. He simply says, Moses, I am going to be with you. And friends, I, I, I need somebody to understand that the greatest promise, slow it down, the greatest promise in the scripture, it is not the promise that he will provide. It is not the promise that he will protect. It is not even the promise that he will forgive. It is not the promise of long life or health. I need you to know the greatest promise in the word of God is the assurance of God's presence with you. And it is interesting when you look at some of the chronicles of, of Joshua and David, like you'll notice that whenever they went into battle, there would be this common uh, refrain. There would be this common inquiry they would make. They would just say, Lord, are you going to go up before us? They would just ask the question through the Urim and the Thurim of, of the priest, Lord, are you going to be with us? 
And it's crazy because, man, if the Urim and Thurim lit up in a certain way and God gave them the assurance that he would be with them, it's crazy because they moved differently. They moved with a certainty. They moved with a victory mindset simply because of the assurance that God would be with them. And friends, this is what I need somebody to know is that the greatest gifts are not the presents we get from God. The greatest gifts is the presence of God. Let me say it again. The greatest gift are not presents. It is his presence. It is the presence of God that anchors us. It is the presence of God that reinforces us. It is the presence of God that chokes out all of your fears. It is the presence and the certainty of his presence that drowns all of our anxieties. We would have less phobias. We would have fewer concerns. We would sleep better at night. We would not need as much earthly support and validation if we just operated in the guarantee of God's divine presence. And so I just want to say a couple of things real quick. One of the things I just need to say to the saints of God today is this. Number one, I want you to be clear, friends of mine, that it is his preference to be with you. Let me say it again, that it is his preference to be with you. In fact, friends, I need you to understand that you don't have to beg God to be with you. You don't have to try to cajole God to be with you. You don't have to try to plead with God to be with you. I need you to know that it is already his presence to walk side by side in integrated relationship with his children. I am praying you digest that principle today. In other words, I need you to know, man, you ain't got to plead and twist God's arm to walk with you. I need you to know, saints, God wants to walk with you oftentimes more than you want to walk with him. <laughs> oh, God. See, see, I need just to understand that you can see this, friends, even in creation. See, I need you to know that, that, that the Bible says God is love. Now, let me say this clear. It says God is love. It doesn't just say God is loving. So to be loving is not just one of the traits or the characteristics of God. No, God by essence is love. God by nature is love. God by construct is love. Like God, it's not something that comes from out with outside of him. God is love. But this is one of the things you've got to know about love is that love always needs an object. Love always needs a target. Love always uh, needs something to aim itself at because the thing about love is that it cannot operate in a vacuum. Uh, love hurts when it's by itself. So love needs something to target. It needs something to bless. It needs something to lavish. It needs something to show affection toward. Why am I saying this? Because I need you to know that creation was not an ego trip. God didn't create us because he's just got this large, out of control, narcissistic personality disorder. And he just needs Ottomans to sit at his feet and worship him and tell him how great he is. No, because God is love, he he, he just couldn't keep it all to himself. So, so his love needed a target. And so he says, man, I'm going to create mankind because I just got an innate need to bless somebody. I've got an innate need to love somebody. I've got an innate need to care for somebody. I need you to know that God didn't create 
us in order to worship him. He created us because he just needed somebody to love and to lavish and to bless and to put in the overflow. And so I need you to understand that principle because I'm not trying to get God to walk with me. It is already his desire to be with me. And see, that is reinforced in Exodus 25 and verse 8. Do you realize that when God said to Moses, let them build me a sanctuary? He didn't say, let them me them build me a sanctuary just so I have a place to make sacrifices. I, he didn't build a sanctuary just so that there would be a place where atonement rituals and exercises could be demonstrated. He says, listen, build a sanctuary that I might dwell amongst them. In other words, God was uncomfortable with the chasm. God created us in the beginning to walk in harmony with one another. But guess what? God says, I still want to come closer. So he was with them as a cloud by day and fire by night because he wanted to come closer. Then he says, okay, build the sanctuary that I might dwell amongst them because he wanted to come closer. But even in the fullness of time, Jesus says, I've got to leave heaven and I'm going to come down here to earth because I want to come closer. But the good news is that on the day that Jesus Christ died and he said it is finished what he did was he tore the veil in half at the temple so that those who were in the outer court could look into the holy of holies and guess what now we don't have to come to a temple why because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit because his desire is to dwell and to live inside of us and guess what the Bible says your body is a temple of the Lord it's not a hotel Oh, help me, Lord, because guess what? You come to hotels and you leave. <laughs> your, your, your body is not an Airbnb because you just visit Airbnbs every now and then when there's the right event. But the Bible says your body is a temple because he wants to live and dwell and abide with you without disruption. And that's why I know he's coming again so that we are able to regain the fellowship that was lost in Eden, that fellowship of uninterrupted uh, 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 conversation and dialogue with God will be resumed in heaven and eternally in the earth made new. And so friends, I just need somebody to understand that you don't have to pray hard for God to walk with you. It is already his desire to walk with you. You don't have to twist his arm to get him to abide with you. It is already his desire. He just won't force himself upon you. He is not going to overwhelm you without uh, uh, consent. God is just simply saying, I just need permission. He's saying, I just need you to open the door. I just need to know I'm welcomed. I just need to know I'm wanted as bad as I want to walk with you. And I need you to know, friends, that when you give consent, that the presence of God will overwhelm every single aspect of your life. The second thing I want to say really quickly is this, is that the presence of God is not conditional. In fact, I gave you some promises in the word, and if you don't mind, I just want to read them with you. I need you to understand that God is with you at just, he says, God is with you when it's stormy outside, just as much as he's with you when the weather is ideal in your life. Let me give you the promises. De Deuteronomy 31 and verse 6. God says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you and he will never leave you nor forsake you. Psalm 145 and verse 18. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Excuse me, that was Joshua chapter one and verse nine. Then Isaiah 43 and verse two, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned and the flames will not set you ablaze. Psalm 145, 18, the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Now, friends, I need you to get that there is one commonality in all of those texts. You see, the assurance of his presence is given in the midst of opposition, 
and difficulty and uncertainty. So he, he essentially says to Moses, don't be terrified or afraid when your enemies abound because I'm never going to leave you or forsake you. He says to Joshua, be strong and be courageous and don't be discouraged. He says, I'm going to be with you wherever you go. He says through the prophet Isaiah that when you're in the furnace of affliction, I am going to be with you. He says to the psalmist that I'm going to be near to anybody who calls upon my name. Why am I saying this? Because there are some of us that try to detect God's presence based upon the circumstance we are in. So that there are some of us that when enemies abound, we wonder if God is with us. When the temperature is uncomfortable, we assume that God is not with us. When difficulties abound, we assume that God is not with us. Man, when the money is low, there is just this assumption that God is not with us. But the promise of God to the people of God is that I will be with you wherever you go. In fact, I need somebody to understand that real faith is not me just being able to sense the nearness of God when circumstances are favorable. See, it's easy to sense God, man, when there is plenty of money and plenty of friends and man, there are plenty of applause and, and my health is well. I can sense God in an overwhelming fashion, but I need us to understand that the presence of God is not a feeling. The presence of God is not an emotion. The presence of God is not a sensation. I don't get a tingling feeling. That's not the affirmation that God is with me. I know that God is with me despite what my bank account says, despite what they say about you on social media, despite what your coworkers have plotted against you, despite of what the doctor's report may be. I have the assurance that he is with me no matter how I feel, no matter how cloudy it is, no matter what the outlook is, simply because he has given me an assurance that he will be with me wherever I go. And this is what I want to say to somebody today, because I'm not sure where you're watching it. I'm not sure what you are in today, but I want somebody to know that he is with you in the hospital room. He is with you in divorce court. He is with you as you intercede for that child who is in trouble. God is with you even though your job security may be uncertain. God is with you even in that financial tumult. I need you to know that God is not sporadic. He is not temperamental. He is not moody. I need somebody to know that he is not a fair weather friend that stands strong when things go well, but he cannot be found when things begin to turn. I need you to know that he is the friend that sticks closer than a brother. And I need you to know that even when circumstance have not changed, when situations have yet to change, there is a promise that does not change. It is the assurance that God is with you wherever you go. And, and this is what I just want to cry aloud to somebody. I want to encourage somebody to lift your head. I want to encourage somebody to cast off the despair. I want somebody to break through the spirit of heaviness that is weighing you down. Maybe you've made some mistakes, but God is still with you. Maybe there is some unrest in your life, but God is still with you. And guess what? Before God told Moses how he was going to do it, before he turned the serpent into a rod, before he did the miracle of a leprous hand, he just gave Moses this unchanging truth. I'm going to be with you. And friends, I need somebody to know that if God is with you, it means that the outcome is already predetermined. It's been prescripted simply by the assurance that God is with you. And then the last thing I want to close out with friends is simply saying this. I, I just want to admonish you. I want to admonish you to make sure you choose him first.
See, the reason some of us don't have the assurance is because we do not, well, some of us have just never made God the first choice. See, what happens is that God is always relegated to a backup role or assignment in our lives. God is always put in an emergency capacity. The reason we don't operate with assurance is because we carve our own path. We choose our own steps. We make our own decisions apart from prayer or wisdom. And then when our decisions become a colossal failure, we want God to be the cleanup man, the one that comes and puts our messes back together, that rescues us from harm. Come on and tell the truth. We've all prayed the prayer that sounds something like this, where we just say, Lord, if you just get me out of this one more time, I promise that I'm going to serve you better, that I'm going to seek you first, that I'm going to make you a priority. And what I'm saying is, friends, if God has gotten you out of a bunch of messes, come on and come on and help the pastor today. Has not God got you out of some of your relational messes and financial messes and situations that were of your own making. And what I'm saying is, if God is able to clean up your mess, why don't you consult God first so that he can keep you out of the mess? <laughs> Instead of making God the repair man, why don't you just let God be the builder of the house? Instead of making God the helmet, won't you make God the handlebars? Instead of making God the emergency brake or the seatbelt, won't you make God the steering wheel? And what I'm saying to somebody today is that God early this morning is giving you the first choice. He's giving you the opportunity to choose teams. And instead of choosing your boo first, instead of choosing your friends first, instead of choosing Facebook counsels first, instead of looking to them first, this is the word and the conclusion of the matter. Matthew 6, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. And I need you to know, friends, that I need you to be reminded that the outcome is not going to be determined by what happens along the way, but I need you to be clear that the outcome is determined when you let God be the captain of the ship. When you allow God to be the driver of the car, when you seek him first, there is an assurance that God is going to be with you wherever you go. And guess what? When you have that assurance and that certainty, you move differently. You operate differently. You have a different trust and a different conviction about the way you move about the day. Uh, it's funny here in Huntsville, you know, we had a week of storms this week that passed through. Uh, and I remember when when my daughter was just a little girl, maybe about two or three years old, uh, we had some storms that came through Huntsville one night. And, and I've shared this story with you before, but I remember uh, because of the lightning and the, the thunder and the noise and the commotion, uh, you know, every 30 minutes or so, she would come knock on the door and say, Daddy, I can't sleep, man. The lightning is too bright and the thunder is too loud. And we would just say, baby, it's it's OK. Just go and lay back down. And and 30 minutes later, she would come back and knock on the door and say, Daddy, I'm afraid I can't sleep. The you know thunder and I'm, I'm afraid of the lightning. I'm just like, baby, you, you're going to be good. You straight. We're inside. Just go and lay back down. And she would come and knock on the door and say, Daddy, man, I can't I can't sleep. I'm afraid. And, and maybe I was just sleepy. Maybe I was in slumber. Maybe. I was just slow to catch the point. But after a while, I didn't send her back. What I just simply did was I got up out of my bed, went into her room and just lay down with her next to her in her bed. And it's crazy because, man, it wasn't five minutes good before those big, wide, aware eyes that were conscious of everything, they were sealed shut. And she slept the rest of the night. Now, this is the crazy thing. The lightning did not stop flashing. The thunder did not stop drumming. The winds did not stop howling. The rain did not stop beating up against the house. The only thing that changed was that she was able to now feel that her daddy was next to her. And, and this is what I'm saying to somebody. I need you to be clear that 
by the time I'm done with this message, the thunder may still be roaring. The lightning may still be flashing. The rain may still be falling. But guess what? You can abide in perfect rest and in perfect peace because you now have the assurance that come what may, no matter what the forecast, no matter what the outlook, you just know and are assured, no matter how you feel, no matter how it looks, no matter what the emotion, you could just have the trust that your father is with you. God bless you and keep you. And remember, all you need to know is that God will never leave you or forsake you. Amen. Amen. What a powerful message. That all you need to know. That's all you need to know. Is, is it? That's it. That's that's, that's it. the word. That's the word today. Mm -hmm. That is that's what we need to receive. This is what you need to know. I yeah. love it. The three points were were poignant. The three points were the ones that it is his presence to his mm -hmm. preference to be with you. Yep. It is his mm -hmm. preference to be with you. Uh, number two, the presence of God is not conditional. Mm -mm. Presence nope. of God is not conditional. It's not you cannot qualify for it. Nope. There's no conditions that must be met. Mm -hmm. The presence of God is not conditional. Yep. It is his preference to be with mm -hmm. you. And then the third, just like he started out with that story about choosing mm -hmm. dad on the yep. team, because he just felt like, man, if I have dad on team, guess what, fam? Right, yeah, it's yeah, going to work yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. It's going to work out. It's going to work <laughs> out. And so, and so, you know, the question for all of us today is who are you choosing first? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who, who are you choosing first? Who are you choosing, are you first? choosing yourself yeah. first? Are you choosing your, your spouse first? Are you choosing, help, help us, help us. Are you choosing your mm -hmm. children first? Yeah. Ah, yeah. what are the excuses that we are making that cause us not to choose God first? We, we've got to get God out of the emergency capacity. Uh, yeah. You got to be a certain age to, to understand what I'm about to say. God needs <laughs> to be, God needs to be 411, not 911. Hey, that's uh, you good. Gotta, you got to be a certain. Remember, four one one. That was information. Information. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you right. got to be information, <laughs> not the emergency contact. Like that's, that's it. what I call when I need the data or I need to know which way to go or how to move. That's it. That's, that's it. That's it. That's it. Four one one. That's. Listen, listen, listen. Make him a part of the plan. Make mm -hmm. him a part of the day. And you know, I love, I love how it all worked together because making God, choosing God first, right, gives mm -hmm. him that permission that we were talking about earlier for the divine yep. disruption. Is it? So, so it's not even a disruption at that point. Yep. You're just still, you're staying on task. You're, right? you're God, on the path you, that he set out for you. Boom, yep. That's boom. It. God, I give you the day. And, and I do have some things lined up, but I give you the mm -hmm. day. And mm -hmm. when he deviates, you, you don't get a, a bent out of shape. You, yep. You're not upset. You yep. just say, okay, God, all right, that, that's, that's where we're going. All right, let me shift. Let me move because I want to be where you are leading me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I love this. This message today is practical. It's, 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 it's right there where we can get to it. It's, it's, it's something that we can actively put into our daily practices today. And that mm -hmm. is what we're going to dive into in our prayer moment. In yeah. our prayer moment, we're going to be talking, we're going to be asking God to reveal to us the excuses that we have been making yeah. that cause us not to choose him first. Mm -hmm. You see, the, the, the truth, you know, they say it in therapy, you, you cannot fix a problem unless we get to the root of what caused it in the first place yeah so and, somebody and saying to themselves okay well with the symptoms you can't come on come on come on come on level of the virus that's the come truth on, come yep. on come on so somebody's out there saying i want to choose god first god help me to choose you first god make me choose you first mm -hmm. family we got to figure out what is it god make me sensitive to understand why i keep on choosing you second or 20th yeah. or a hundredth Help me to understand that part. And that's what we want to be praying on this morning as we yeah. go into our prayer moment. And so we're going to we're going to do that right now. OK, OK, we're, we're in our prayer time now and then we're going to ask Pastor Snell to to pray. But I'm going to grab your prayer requests as you as you are sharing them, as you are sharing okay. them, I'm going to try and grab your prayer requests. Uh, we we our, our specific prayer request is God, help me 
help, help me to rest in those words. All you need to know is mm -hmm. that God is with you. It is his preference to be with you. And his preference to be with you is not conditional. Mm -hmm. So now that we have that in the back of our minds, this is what we need to know. Our prayer request is God help me to be sensitive to know why I don't choose you first. Mm -hmm. Why I don't choose you first. Okay. Uh, right. Let me let me go let me go through here and see what we got in terms of comments. Uh, okay. Let me see here. Uh, is my prayer is to choose God first? Yes, 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 yep. yes. Please pray for my family, Diane Smith. Relationships, health challenges, finances, and I will continue to share this excuseless journey with others and put God first in my life, even when we don't. When I don't feel it, He's there. That's good, Deanna. That's mm -hmm. good. Praying for restoration for my nuclear family and salvation for all of them. Pray I choose and die to self daily. Prioritize God in every aspect of my life. Deliverance for my daughter from a narcissist from narcissistic abuse. We were praying with mm -hmm. you, Barbara. With God, all things are possible. Pray for me and my family, for my uh, for my uh, for my family members. Praying praying to choose God before contempt towards. Um, in my life. Marquita says, please pray for my children, siblings, and I to prioritize God over everything, okay. over everything. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Traveling mercies for a flight today. Daphne is praying. Hey, we're praying, we're praying with you and for you. My, my, my God first yesterday, I wanted to ask you to baptize me, but I am in, oh, hold on now. Hold on now. Let's see what we got here. Let me read this properly. Um, DXB USA. Okay. All right. I wanted to ask you to baptize me, but I am in DXB. Maybe like you Americans need. Uh, okay, I, I don't know. I, I've got. I'm gonna. I'm gonna star that one and come back to it a little later. Okay. Baptism yeah. is definitely. It perks my my attention. Amen. I'm always my sense. My, my I'm ultra sensitive towards the term baptism. So we want to make sure yeah. that we get a chance to to come back to that one later. Later, um, uh, Douglas. So we'll come back to that one later. Charlene says praying that I will forever put God first and that he will give me his his peace that he promised in John 14, 27. Absolutely amazing, a beautiful prayer request. Uh, Aaron Smith, praying for wisdom and understanding. Uh, Barbara, for my daughter to put God first. Uh, please pray for me to put God first. This is truly a struggle. Thank you for your, your, your transparency, Sophia. Not, not mm -hmm. everyone is willing to put it out there like that. But yeah. if we're honest, if we're honest, it, it is an enigma that the yeah. God of the universe who lavishes yeah. his love on us with reckless abandon, we mm -hmm. do not choose, actively yeah. choose to love him back. Mm -hmm. It's an enigma. And so and so I feel your struggle. I share your struggle. I share your struggle. And I thank you're you. For, not you're, you're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. alone. You're not alone. Thank you for putting that out there today. Uh, I'm going to just read one or two more, Pastor, and, and then we're giving it to you. After surgery yep. complications from years ago, we were praying for a surgery and praying for health for my son. We're praying with you, Hyacinth. Lord, help me and my family to choose you first in everything. We're praying with you, Debbie. Choose God first. Explicit trust in him. Dawn, we're praying with you as well. Pray for Latricia, who is in the health crisis. We're praying. We're praying. Uh, ex exile, exile the excuses uh, to Truman has shared with us. I love that phrase, exile Amen. the excuses. Uh, pray, please pray for me to continue to put first God first in everything that I do. Doc, I'm going to continue putting some more up on screen. Okay. Right. I want to give the time over to you now for you to be able sure. to pray over, his, over, your, over God's people. And we want the family to know that uh, our prayer team, uh, the addition, you know, some of the pastors that are not on screen right now, they're scrolling through. Um, and, and we just ask that you would just be, as we stated earlier, a nation of intercessors. So as you see those prayer requests going through, if you begin calling on the name of the Lord with us, our, our combined prayers will, will we believe, will will move the hand of God. And so, Father in heaven, again, we come before you boldly because that's the way you invite us to come. And Lord, we come with the assurance, Lord, that you are with us, that it is your presence to dwell with us. And Lord, we thank you for the assurance that whenever we gather in your name, whether it be in a building or whether we gather together as a group of temples online, we know that you are with us. And so, Lord, one of the constant refrains of our prayer request is a desire, the will and the strength to make you our chief priority. 
So Lord, I pray that you would give us the wisdom to begin laying aside distractions, to begin cutting away, Lord, the entanglements of the heart that are drawing us away to the things of this life and making it hard for us to dial in on the things of the spirit. And so, Father, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you would give a new resolve that you would give us an even greater portion of your spirit. And that, Lord, we would put some boundaries around our morning time with you. So, Lord, give us the wisdom to silence devices, to put notifications away, to, to just prioritize the calling upon your name. And, Lord, we know that as we do that, Lord, you will govern our activities, that you would guide our activities, that you would shape each and every one of our outcomes. But, Lord, my prayer for somebody today that who is in a difficult stretch, may they not use emotion as a metric for your nearness. May they not lean into feeling, but Lord, may they simply trust the promises of your word that, that you promised that you would never leave us nor forsake us, that you would be with us wherever we go. And you said that you would be near to those who call upon you in truth. In fact, Lord, in Psalm 34, you've said, Lord, that you are near to those who are have a crushed spirit and to those who are contrite in heart. And so, Lord, to that person, Lord, who is in the valley of uh, uncertainty, who is in the furnace of affliction, Lord, give them the assurance that you are closer to them in difficulty, that you are nearer now than you have ever been. And so, Lord, we raise up some of the individual prayer requests. We pray for our sister who is traveling today. May the angel of the Lord be encamped about her as she goes. Lord, there's somebody who is praying for a daughter who is dealing with an abusive situation. Lord, we pray that you would step in with force, that you would come to her rescue. We pray to God where darkness may illuminate her thinking. Lord, may the light of your love and an understanding of her value illuminate her thinking and that you would strengthen her will, Lord, to be able to step out of that situation. Lord, we pray for those individuals who are touched with sickness today. Lord, just please remind them that you are with them, that you will be with them. And so, Lord, I'm praying, first of all, that you would give them peace. Lord, may they not be anxious. May you blanket their soul with certainty and assurance. And Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus for those, Lord, uh, that, that you would touch them. I pray that somebody would find relief from their pain. My prayer is that someone who is watching in a hospital today will be watching at home by the end of this week. Lord, we pray for that person who is in a season of grief and it's hard to trust you because it's hard to trace you. Lord, I, I pray that they would know that grief is natural, that, that grief is a part of the journey. But we thank you for the assurance that though weeping may endure for a night or some nights, that joy cometh in the morning. And so, Lord, we ask in a very special way that you would just draw near. And Lord, as you draw near, I pray that somebody would just close today's service with a new certainty, with new assurance, Lord, with a boldness and a courage because they are clear in their inner world that their outcomes are not determined by what happens during the day, but outcomes are deterrent, determined by the covenant they make with you at the start of the day. So Lord, would you bless your people? Would you cover and keep your people? And would you give us strength, Lord, to face this day and this week? For we pray it all in the wonderful name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen and amen. 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 A lot of a lot of of of, of requests still coming in. And I I, I I echo what Pastor Snell shared. Uh, the remainder of the pastoral team, along with the prayer warriors and those in the chat, uh, those who have, have self deputized themselves as prayer warriors as well. We love it. We love to see that we, as we shared earlier, man, as you feel so impressed and moved, as you see requests coming in and you say, OK, God, I'm going to take that one. I'm mm -hmm. going to intercede over that one. I'm going to pray over that one. These are these are some things that we we believe as we do them, 
that it will it will have effect and impact on ourselves as well. And then we'll be uh, scrolling back through, Pastor, even after this is over, you know, to look at the prayer requests, to mention those individuals and those prayer requests by name and, and to call on the name of the Lord, not for you, but with you. And the reason I'm saying you. not for you Oof. is guess what, man? The, the veil has been torn down. It's not just <laughs> the priests that get to go behind the veil. We all get to go behind the veil. So we're going to be joining you in, in calling on the name of the Lord with you for those various Amen. prayer requests. Amen. Pastor, Amen. Can, I, can I say this uh, before we Absolutely. close today? Absolutely. So I, I, just, to, just a note to our, our students. The, the code is there. Go ahead, Doc. Yeah, yeah, students, you want you to get your worship credit. So there's somebody uh, in, in that, you know, got the, got the question that I thought was very illuminating and just for somebody else who may be feeling that way, because, you know, we've been talking about, let me just say this, the book has two phases. So uh, as we get into around week, uh, day number 13 and 14, we're going to be getting into some of the day-to-day -day excuses, but we've been spending a lot of language in the, this, a lot of time talking about the language of calling. And so mm. somebody said, well, listen, pastor, I don't, I, you know, maybe God is not calling me to write a book or to start a business or start a ministry or like Moses, deliver a people. But remember, excuseless living is not just about these grand, robust ideas. Excuseless living is simply saying, wherever I'm convicted by God in my life, yeah. I just I won't make an excuse for it. So so maybe God is not calling you to get, in, get up and relocate and move to Huntsville. It'd be great if he was, but he's not calling everybody <laughs> to do that, right? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But maybe it's simply saying, I need to develop a routine for my devotional life. Mm. Like, I, I'm not going to continue to allow things to crowd that space. Yeah. It may just be saying, okay, I need to develop, you know, some organizational competencies uh, yeah. and so that my yeah. life is not always lacking structure. Um, maybe it's, you know, maybe you just need to have a hard conversation and be reconciled with a family member or a friend. And you've been giving all these different reasons and excuses as to why I'm not going to do these things. So again, we've been talking in very big and broad language, but I need you to understand that you will never stop making excuses on the large scale mm. if you're still making excuses on a daily habitual way. Yes. So so again, don't, don't just think, man, you just got to quit a job, start a business, so on and so forth. Some of you may be already doing those areas, but maybe in your inner world, that's where some of the excuses are abounding. So mm. let me be clear. Excuses living is not, everybody's not going to be Moses or Gideon. But, <laughs> but at the end of the day, all of us have an incomplete assignment. Yes. All of us have an area of lack where we're propping up excuses as to why we're not growing, progressing, moving in the area where God is called. And so I just need you to be clear that this is not for an elite few. This is for imperfect people that need to move. And, and I just want to say this, that excuses living is not about behaving. It's mm -hmm. about becoming. becoming. And, 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 it, and it's about who you are inwardly. And, and who you are inwardly begins to determine your habits, your outcomes, and what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And so I just want to just 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 plant that word in somebody's heart today. You don't have to That's good. record an album, write a book, so and so. That may not be your calling, but wherever there is conviction wherever the Lord is bringing things to your attention. For some, it may just be as simple as getting active in church. <laughs> you know, it, it could be uh, just that. It could yeah. be that, you know, and you've been kind of saying, well, I'm busy and this, and da, 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 da. It, that, that, that's, this is your burning bush. <laughs> this is your moment to begin moving the area of excuseless living. I love it. 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 We, 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 we love seeing your, your comments and everything coming through as well. Mm -hmm. There are, there's, there's just so many different things we want to make sure you are aware of. Listen, uh, some of you, I saw several of you in the chat yesterday for our singles, uh, discussion conversation for committed and covered. It was absolutely mm -hmm. awesome. And we thank you for coming in and, 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 and taking part in that. And for those that maybe, maybe you missed it, uh, several things that we have going on here at the Oakwood university church, uh, specifically online and committed and covered is one of them every third Sabbath afternoon at 5 p.m. Central Time. And we want to make sure you guys get a chance uh, to see that and, and take part in it as well. We've got uh, a deeper look tomorrow evening. We've got uh, cameras on on Thursday. Of course, we have our Wednesday night prayer meeting on Wednesday. But every morning this week at 6 a.m., uh, my, Pastor Paul and myself will be hosting this 21 days of prayer. And we'd love for mm -hmm. you to be not only come, but also to bring a friend, to invite someone, uh, and then to, to, to you know, do your prep work, right? To, to, yeah. to read the chapter. Yeah. Uh, because because while we may not go over the chapter word for word, it will be yep. the launch pad 
yeah, for the the discussion and the time that we will share together here online. And mm-hmm. so we're excited about that. <laughs> Somebody says, I need an XXXL excuseless sweatshirt. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 knew it was, I knew those requests were coming. Yeah. I, knew, I knew those were, were, were requests were coming. So, oh, yeah. So, Charles so Roberts said. Yeah, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. We, we don't have the, t- the sweatshirts available just yet, but we do have the T-shirts. It is summertime, so the T-shirts are available. Uh, we are we're on the on the edge this of summertime, true. but you this can get true. them over at the at the Breath of Life website, www.breathoflife.tv. <laughs> but give us a little while. We are trying to get these sweatshirts in place. They have been. In, in great demand. So give us, give us a little while. Give us a little Absolutely. while. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I see several of you responding in the chat saying we enjoyed the singles chat. I'm so glad that you did. And um, I think it's, it's such a powerful and relevant conversation that needs to be had more. And so I just want to affirm our leadership here, uh, the, the, the family life leaders. And then, of course, uh, uh, Sister Wise, who is the leader for the singles ministry and her team. They're doing some great work. So if you get a chance to check that out, it's right here on the Oakwood University Church YouTube channel. And so definitely something that, uh, you know, can edify you and, and, and be a part yeah. of your day. Uh, Doc, I want to say a word of thanks to you. I know we're, you're going to be right back here with us tomorrow morning. Yeah, and, we're and, here in the morning. And, and the next chapter, chapter nine, uh, I'm just trying to get my thumb over to it. Uh, maybe you might get there before it's me. It's called the, the jet stream. The jet stream. The jet chapter stream. Nine. My yeah, goodness, yeah, the yeah. jet stream. I it's was actually, looking at chapter 10. One of my, it's one of my favorite chapters of the book. Each one has its own intent and purpose. But I, right. I do believe this is going to be very encouraging for somebody who feels like they've been waiting for a long time mm. or they're, they're afraid to move because they're worried about how long it may take certain things to materialize. I think this is going to help somebody and really bless and, and free somebody to, to yeah. make the move. And so uh, if you hadn't got the book, please make sure you you pick up your copy. Go to the website, www.breathoflife.tv, or you can pick it up on Amazon.com. That's and right. Pastor, I, I do want you to know, um, and I, you know, I've been nervous about doing it, but sometime here, I'm, going, I'm not going to give a date, but sometime here in the next uh, week and a half or so, or maybe two weeks at the longest, we're going to be putting the audio version of the book in front of you. So it's going to be available here soon. So those going, who love to read it old school, others will be able to listen to it. So that'll be coming in the near, near, near future. Yeah. Hey, hey, listen, I, I put one one uh, comment on screen. Somebody says we need bumper stickers. Doc. We need, yeah, we need bumper that. stickers. Excuse, excuseless, <laughs> excuseless bumper stickers. We've got a whole line of merch that we need to develop. Uh, yeah. I could see something saying, ask me why I'm excuseless. Oh, man, that's a conversation starter. Uh, yeah. Let me see what else we got. One other person says, um, yeah. One other person says, by the time you you get the sweatshirts, I'm going to need a large because yeah. I'm being excuseless with my help. I love that. Come on. <laughs> Walk in and sister. Take what's Take what's yours. I love, that. Yours. I love that. I love that. That is absolutely amazing. Well, family, listen, this has been an, a rich time together. Uh, so, somebody says, hey, it's cold somewhere. So get those sweatshirts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this, this has been a rich time together. And we are excited uh, for all that God is doing. We want to hear your testimonies as well. We're going to be setting something up in the coming days for you to be able to send some videos in. We're going to work mm-hmm. to get that uh, that submission process a little easier so it's not just an email. So you can just kind of upload it from your phone, make that really simple. Uh, so we want to get that done. But man, I tell you what, we are excited to see and hear what God is doing in your life as you continue Amen. this journey on Becoming Excuses. We will see you tomorrow at 6 6 a.m. 6 a.m. That's 7 a.m. for my folks in the East. Man, that's 4 a.m. for my folks out West. And, 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 but I know mm-hmm. several of you are coming. So we, we're gonna, we, we, we love that, that level of commitment. But we thank you so much for your time and attention today. Go with God and be blessed. Mm-hmm.